Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 1,664 of What's She Up To Now? Trust the light at the end of the tunnel and process of life. Uh, our idiom for Supersize Your Business today is one we've talked about before, the light at the end of the tunnel. I talked about, uh, you know, it's, from the, it's a metaphor from the 1880s, which is talking about hope. It was popularized by JFK uh, with respect to the conflict in Vietnam, the war in Vietnam. I don't know why they called it a conflict. You know, it's like calling peaceful protests, riots, peaceful protests. Not the same thing, but uh, I think people believe that if they call something uh, less or more than it, what it is, then it becomes that thing. But it actually doesn't work that way. Uh, we all see what we want to see, and that has an impact on our lives. So that was our idiom today. We talked about how do you use that to be the light at the end of the tunnel for your business, especially in turbulent times or challenging times. And that we need to stick to our core values, what we know is right, whether other people are doing it or not, because we're in our lives for the long run. Our uh, topic for co confidence related for our annual challenge, the BU 365 day challenge today was, I trust the process of life. And I shared some lessons I've learned and I guess, concepts I attempt to live by to the best of my ability and it's a continually improving work in progress just like for most other human beings that serve me well and help me to create the life I want versus just going through the motions of letting life battle me around like a you know a, a ship in the wind and letting the weather in the wind just battle the ship around without having any direction or course set uh, we can we can live our lives in in those two ways or in, in a multitude of other ways anything's possible if we choose to believe that we have personal power and the ability to change things or impact our lives uh, I think as we get older we understand that we have a whole lot more control over our lives than we think that we do uh, when we're young I, at least when I was a kid when I was young I didn't think I had any control over my life I I thought yeah and, and not because my parents didn't tell me that I did but just because I, I guess the experiences I was having as a child didn't let me necessarily believe that. And it wasn't until I was older and I tried some stuff and failed and then tried some other things and succeeded that I figured out, oh, based on the decisions and the choices and the experiences I have, I'm gonna get closer to what I want in my life or I'm gonna get further away from that. Uh, and I don't know, I don't know when I had that realization, probably not until my 40s, uh, but it, in, well, into, now that I'm into my 60s, not my mid-60s, but my 60s, uh, I think I'm seeing more of that, or at least I'm letting myself see more of that. And I think I'm responding to things in a much more mature way than I did when I was younger. So trusting the process of life and the different experiences we have and realizing that we can control some of those experiences through the choices and, and what we think and feel and believe about things. And that we have tools, and I shared some tools and that I have used for quite a few years that can take me from negative, upset um, about a situation and flip that around and find what are the positives in that situation. It used to take me a long time when I had a bad experience to work through that. Sometimes I, some things took decades to work through, but when I learned some of these tools, I could work through them much more quickly. So they didn't have a negative impact on me for as many years as some of my earlier experiences did. And I can, much more quickly now look for, okay, that was bad, that just happened. And instead of wallowing and feeling sorry for myself and making excuses as to why it happened and not taking any responsibility for why it happened, I'm a lot quicker now to say, okay, this is what I did that I could, probably could have done a different way. This is what I said that I probably could have said better that wouldn't have hurt people's feelings or that wouldn't have made me look like a jerk or that wouldn't have made me feel bad, etc. And I can look for the what, what did that event need to show me and what did I need to learn from it? And if I approach challenges and bad things that happen that way, I get over them a lot faster and I don't repeat them. I don't repeat the same mistakes over and over and over again like I did when I was younger. I would find the most creative ways to do the same stupid things over and over again. It was almost mind boggling. So, still helping my mom move probably for another week or two, uh, which is again, a, a confidence, impacting a task to say the least so if I can help you anyway hit me up and ask having a sleepover with my granddaughter tonight which I'm super excited about uh, but if you need any help please ask you know how to reach me pajamagrama at gmail.com on Voxer if you don't know what Voxer is I would look it up because it is my personal favorite tool 
because it's like a walkie-talkie system. So someone can answer, ask me a question, and as soon as I hear it, I can answer it immediately, or if I want to do some research or look into something or find something out, I can, I can box through them right back if I need more information, or if I have a question, or if I need something clarified. It's, you know, like walkie-talkies when you're traveling, and you can talk to the car in back of you, or walkie-talkies when you can, and, but it's a lot better than walkie-talkies because it can go around the world. Uh, it's a great tool. All right, have an awesome day. I will be with you tomorrow.